All right, y'all, welcome back. My name is Emily Taylor, and I am one of your trainers here at Pragmatic Works. In this video, we are gonna uncover five more Excel functions you must know. But these are gonna be advanced functions because they include a few parameters or arguments that make these functions work. As always, I have included a sample worksheet with fake data for you to follow along and practice these functions. You can access this by clicking the link in the description below. The first function we are gonna walk through will be the payment function, or PMT. The PMT function in Excel is used to calculate the payment for a loan based on a constant payment date and a consistent interest rate. So, here in our Excel sheet, we're gonna use this to determine a car loan payment. You see that the payment function has a few arguments that we need to include. We're gonna start by clicking into our payment cell and bring in that PMT function. The first thing we need to include is the rate. We have a rate of 6%, but because we are paying this monthly, we're gonna divide that by 12 because that is an annual interest rate. The next thing we're going to include will be the amount of payments or the number of payments. We're gonna be paying over five years, but we're gonna multiply that by 12 because we have 12 payments in a year. And Last but not least, we're gonna include the present value or what the loan amount will be, which is $15,000. And as you see, we've got a couple additional parameters or arguments that we can include. Those are in square brackets. You don't have to include those. So we're gonna go ahead and exclude them for this case. I'm gonna close my parentheses and click enter. You'll notice that it came up as a negative amount because it is a payment. Um, if you don't like seeing the parentheses around it, you can just simply put a negative in front of one of these values and it turns your payment into a positive number. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this cell over so that now I compare the monthly payment based on a seven-year loan with a higher interest rate or a five-year loan with a lower interest rate. And just like that, we're on to function number two, round. Round allows users to round a number to a specific number of digits. This could be useful for financial calculations, statistical analysis, or when you simply just want to present data in cleaner forms. So we're gonna practice by simply rounding these payments to the nearest dollar amount. I'm gonna click into the cell I want to include my round and bring in that round function. I'm going to be rounding cell C6 and I have to tell Excel that I want to round it to the nearest whole number, which I'm gonna type in zero, close my parentheses and click enter. And just like that, $289.99 rounds up to an even 290. I can do the same thing in my other cell by dragging this over and you see that in this case, it rounded our dollar amount down. And on to function number three, the if error function. You really can't call yourself an advanced Excel formula user if your Excel spreadsheet is completely full of errors. The if error function shows you how to return a specific phrase rather than a value if it, you have a situation where you know you're gonna be returning errors. In this tab of our spreadsheet, we want to determine the average cost of a plant per sale. In our case, we spent $15 on roses and we have zero purchase. Typically, when I were to just divide my expenses divided by the amount purchased, we would receive a divide by zero error. We can get rid of that by using the if error function. And in this case, I type in the exact same formula that I wanted before, C3 divided by C D3, but I get to add in a parameter of what I want it to say if that's going to return that divide by zero error. If it returns an error, I would like it to say no sales with a quotation mark around the words that I would like it to say. Close my parentheses and click enter. And in this case, now we don't have our error, we've got a reason for why that error is there. I can drag my function down. And the really nice part about my if error formula is that 
it doesn't just return the if error, it also returns the actual equation if there is no error to be seen. So as you can see, my burn didn't have a divide by zero error. So you can see by each sale, I was able to bring in about 63 cents per sale. And just like that, we're on to function number four, filter. The filter function allows you to filter a range or an array based on specific criteria. It's gonna return only the rows or columns that you pick as your criteria. This is useful for creating dynamic reports without altering your original data. I'd like to make a list of all of my plants that don't have any sales so that I know to remove them from the floor and not purchase them anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and use my filter function and select the array that I would like to include. I'm gonna grab all of this information, put in my comma. My next parameter says include. I would like to include anything in this D column that has a value of zero. And I'm gonna go ahead and ignore that optional parameter of if empty, I don't want it to be included in my spreadsheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that parentheses and click enter. And just like that, you can see that it has went ahead and brought over both our rose and our orchid because our rose and our orchid were our two plants that didn't have any sales. And now just like that, I can go ahead and remove them from my sales. And finally, function number five, XLOOKUP. We're gonna explore how to use the XLOOKUP function to search for a value in a range and return a corresponding value from another range, both vertically or horizontally this would work for. If you were a user of index match, VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP before, you're gonna love XLOOKUP because this was meant to replace all of these because it offers more flexibility instead of only searching your table one specific direction. Right here in my XLOOKUP tab, you can see that I have some employee IDs some employee names, and some salaries. I'd like to be able to look up salaries based off of both employee names or an employee ID if I don't know how to spell their name. In this case, let's say I wanna look up Mia Taylor. I wanna know her salary. I can go ahead and type in my X lookup function tab and I'm gonna select my lookup value first. I'm gonna select G4 because that's what I'm looking for. And then I have to select the column that I'm looking for the words Mia Taylor. I'm gonna drag my formula information over to the side so that I am able to select. Mia Taylor will be found in column C. Put in my comma. And then I need to determine where am I trying to get my return value. My return value is gonna be from column D, close my parentheses and click enter. And just like that, we can even test it. Let's see, Mia Taylor's salary, sure enough, $72,000 or $72,975. Well, what if I wanna look up by employee ID? I could do the exact same thing. Maybe I wanna look for employee let's say 120. I can use my XLOOKUP function again. And this time I'm just gonna select my cell G8, or sorry, G7. And G7 would be in column B this time because it is an employee ID. Put in my comma to determine where will my value be coming from. Again, I do have to move my formula bar um, information to select column D, close my parentheses, and click enter. We can look for employee 120 just to confirm this is correct. Aria Robinson, employee 120, is in fact making $47,000. I have additional Excel content I'm eager to share with you. In my upcoming videos, I intend to address some of the most frequently used functions by different professions. Please leave a comment below to tell me your industry. Your input could inspire my next industry-focused video. And please 
don't forget to like and subscribe to us here on this YouTube channel here at Pragmatic Works. And you can tune into my full in-depth course on topic cell functions and our on-demand learning platform at pragmaticworks.com for many more in-depth Excel function tutorials. I haven't mentioned it before in my previous courses here on YouTube, but if you don't already have an on-demand learning license with us at Pragmatic Works, you can click the link below with my special promo code to get 40% off your license. I can't wait to hear your feedback. See you in my next series. Thank <laughs> you.